Hi guys, so this is the Bio 321 uh, Introduction to Statistics for the Genomics Students. Stats Intro for Genomics. All right. So understand that you guys are, some of you anyway, are designing uh, experiments that are a little bit simpler than some of the other Bio 321 experiments. And as I understand it, there are uh, a couple of kinds of analyses that you'll be doing that will um, be put into your proposal. You'll need to sort of describe um, those things uh, in your proposal. And so I wanted to uh, introduce those statistical analyses with sufficient detail that you could actually write about them in your proposal. And so um, what I thought I'd do is kind of describe what I understand are you're going to be your experiments. And uh, we'll, we'll go over those analyses by way of that introduction. So your dependent variables are you're going to be sequencing um, bits of genomes. And, um, and I understand it's going to be a gamish, an official biological term, a gamish of DNA from microbial communities. And so your y variable is going to need to be crunched down into something that you can analyze. And I'm going to assume for the time being today that you're going to measure something having to do with genomic diversity. And so you're going to come up with some kind of index, whether it's Shannon Wiener index or some other kind of index of diversity. Um, we don't really care other than the fact that it's going to be a continuous variable of, of some kind. So what do we mean by a continuous variable? So if we look at y and the possible values it can take, in other words, we just plot the different values and, and what they could possibly be, what we get is a uh, often very much a normal distribution. So um, it would look like this in terms of a plot of the frequency of different y values we could get. And when we say it's continuous, what we mean is that it, between, between some minimum and maximum, we could basically get any possible value. Now, obviously, it's limited by the number of decimal points that you would write um, the number to. But basically, a continuous variable can take on any value between a minimum and a maximum. In other words, it's not a discrete thing like 0 or 1, but it could be 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. OK, so that's our dependent variables that we are going to be measuring as a function of something else are continuous variables. And I'm assuming it'll be something like diversity. OK? Now, let's imagine we have an experimental design. And I'm going to imagine here, uh, I'm just making up a scenario. Let's imagine we have a river. And we have a chemical tank sitting on the side of a river. Why would I be writing about this? Um, and then we have sort of a river direction flowing this way. <laughs> and um, You've decided to sample the microbial community in the river. So here's our river here. Okay, here's our water. You've decided to sample the community upstream and downstream from the river. And you'll get multiple samples. So let's say you get n equals 10 samples from above the tank. Uh, upstream and 10 samples uh, from below the tank. Okay, so with that kind of design, what kind of statistical analysis should we do? No, I'm actually waiting for you to answer that question <laughs> because you should know um, the answer to that question, right? So what we're going to have is some continuous variable. We have uh, upstream and we have downstream, so our our independent variable is the position relative to the tank. And our mean y is what we're going to have to plot, our mean diversity. Um, and we are going to test whether these two means are statistically different. I've drawn error bars on the mean, right? How would we do that test? No, really, I want you to answer that question. <laughs> OK, you should know. Remember a t-test, right? t-test is a very, very simple test where we're comparing two means to each other. And if you don't know how to do a t-test, I'm going to challenge you to look it up. Now, 
I might suggest for some very simple statistics you use something like the Khan Academy online, right, to kind of help you through with tutorials. Probably many of you are familiar with the Khan Academy from high school. Maybe you were doing some tutorials with high school classes or something, right? Um, okay, but what if we are interested in um, something more complex than this. All right, so let's let's do something a little bit different. Um, let's create a new one. Actually, I'm sure there's another way of doing this. Gosh, what did I do? Um, ah, we go. Okay. So let's say we're, we're going to sample a little bit differently from the river here. So here's our river. The same scenario here and we have our tank on the side of the stream. And um, we decide instead to measure sort of zero, uh, 50 meters, and 100 meters downstream from the tank. Okay, so instead of having just two positions, upstream and downstream, we actually have three different distances, sort of a no distance, a medium distance, and a large distance away. Um, you know, we could even do something you know, very different, like a thousand meters away and 50 meters and zero. Okay, imagining that some kind of uh, something leaking, sorry, that's my clock there. I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> that's a Carolina Wren, by the way. So we have some kind of chemical leaking out into the river and we expect it to be diluted as it goes downstream and we expect, expect it to have effects on microbial communities differentially as a function of distance downstream. Here we go, I don't know, let's go uh, a kilometer downstream as well as 50 meters as well as zero meters. Okay, so we have three distances and we're kind of imagining what kind of variable we're going to get here. So we're going to have three distances uh, at the source, close, and far, okay, as defined by our diagram here. Now, so we might get our diversity means based upon, let's say, n equals five samples at each distance. Okay, we can imagine we'll get uh, three means and three standard errors. And our question here that we're asking, we need actually every every uh, statistical statistical analysis we're doing should be answering a question. What's our question here? How does distance from the tank affect uh, microbial diversity. Okay. But distance in this case is just sort of three classes of distances. So x equals three discrete values. We often call these nominal values because we can give them a name, source, close, far, and actually we're going to kind of ignore the specific distances, 0, uh, 50, and 1,000 meters, okay? But we, we're going to talk about that later. How do we ask, is there an effect of distance, our x, distance class, on our continuous variable y? The way we do that is with an analysis called ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. And in, in this particular case, we have one factor that we're looking at. The factor is the distance class that the sample is from, but we have three levels of that factor, right? So we have the level of source, 
the level of close and the level of far, which we're defining as specific distances. So um, our analysis of variance, what is that actually doing? That's What that's doing is that's asking whether the level of the factor distance class affects the mean, the mean diversity of the microbial community, okay? And the way we answer that question is with analysis of variance. Now, in analysis of variance, what we're going to do is an F test. And I'll explain the F test later, but basically F is like T. It's a statistic, and we're going to get a number out of our analysis of our original data, which is going to be something like 4.168, okay? And we're also going to get a p-value associated with that. And the number, according to this F, is is the effect of that factor, okay? And the higher the F, the more significant it is. Now, by more significant, what we actually mean is a lower p-value, right? So we might see something like p equals 0.012, and that would be statistically significant. Why? Because if you think back to our t-test, right, we would typically say if p is less than 0.04, Five, it is significant. We put a little asterisk next to it to, to indicate significance. And this would be significant because it's less than 0.05. And I'll explain more when I go into the nitty-gritty of analysis of variance and how we're actually going to analyze it with a program called SAS Jump next video. But for now, what you need to know is if you have a class variable as your independent variable, such as distance class, and your y variable is continuous, such as diversity, and you have replicates, you need to have replicates, then you will analyze it using a one-way analysis of variance. So it's a one-way ANOVA, and there are more complicated ones. A one-way ANOVA, and you will analyze it using SAS jump. Okay, so that's the program you're going to use. You're going to use version 11, by the way. And you should cite both that you're going to use a one-way ANOVA and that you're going to analyze it in SAS Jump in your proposal. Okay, so very important that you um, not be running on <laughs> a reserve power, but also that you, um, that you know you would do an ANOVA to analyze that kind of data. All right, I can see I'm running out of power. I'm gonna hurry up a little bit. Now, there's another way to do this kind of analysis, and I just wanna mention it because some of you may find this preferable. Let's say you're measuring distance, and you decide, okay, I'm gonna measure 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250 um, distances. And I'm going to get n equals 3 at each of those. Or maybe I'm just going to get 1, okay? I actually, with this kind of analysis, I don't need replication at each distance. But, so now I'm going to treat my x variable as a continuous variable. And my y is diversity. So it is also continuous, right? Just like before. So that's fine, but what kind of analysis will we do? Well, if we do a plot of distance, now we actually have a quantitative value, 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250, which we're plotting against our y, right? And so we're going to have plots of some kind of diversity measure, and we may actually have multiple ones at each one. Okay, that's fine. Whether you do or not, you can do this analysis. And we're going to ask if there is an effect of distance on diversity. So this is still our independent variable. It's just now continuous on diversity. This is our dependent variable. But we're going to do a different kind of analysis here. We're going to do linear regression. Now we can do other kinds of regression that aren't linear, but the simplest one is to do linear regression where we are going to try to fit a line to 
our data. Okay, and again, we're going to do linear regression with this when we're treating our x as continuous, and we're going to, um, you want to mention that in your proposal, that you're going to do linear regression, and you are still going to use SAS jump version 11.0. Okay, so you're going to use SAS jump, do linear regression, and what are you testing here? You're asking whether they're really, whether the slope is different from zero. Right? So a significant linear regression is one where the slope um, does not equal zero. And that's what you will test. And you will get a, a value of the slope, b equals the slope. And it will be some number, you know, b equals 0.186. And the question is, the null hypothesis is, the null hypothesis is that b equals zero, and you will test for a difference between the observed slope and a slope of zero. And if that difference is statistically significant using SAS jump, um, then you will conclude there is an effect of distance on diversity. All right, so I think I'll just stop there. I just wanted to kind of introduce the two kinds of analyses that you may end up using in your proposals when you have a continuous y variable, but either a nominal class variable, like distance class or position, or a continuous x variable, okay? And so you now have the vocabulary to describe the analyses you're gonna do. And one way analysis of variance using SAS jump version 11.0. And you're going to, in that case, test the null hypothesis that there is no effect of distance class on diversity. And if you reject that null hypothesis, in other words, you find significant difference among means, you will do that with your ANOVA. And here, if you have a con if you want to treat your X variable as continuous. Sometimes it's a more powerful way to do it, actually. You'll be doing linear regression, okay? And you'll be plotting, uh, you'll be fitting a best fit line um, using linear regression, getting us testing whether the slope is significantly different from a slope of zero, which is the null hypothesis. And you, you actually, with regression, I just want to emphasize this, you don't need replication at each distance. What you do need is more than two points, because two points will fit a line perfectly, but you don't really explain anything, right? So you, you do need um, more than two points to fit a line, preferably many more than two points, so that you can get a, a good fit. The more points you have, the better the possibility that you'll be able to, to statistically reject the null hypothesis. Okie doke. I hope that's good enough intro for now, but tune back in later where we'll explain one-way ANOVA in detail, and that uh, video will actually be the same for your groups as well as the other Bio321 groups. All right, talk to you then.